Hey again, it's uh, midweek and it's Bible study time and I hope that you continue to go through Psalms. Um, what a great book. There's no other book in the Bible that really uh, speaks to every circumstance life could actually throw at us. And if you're going through uh, chapter by chapter or Psalm by Psalm, um, you're finding, man, this thing speaks to me in places where I'm living right now. It speaks to me in places I've been. Uh, it speaks to who God is. It speaks to the future. Um, it just, it speaks volumes. And uh, I've never really gone through it like I'm going through it right now. So it's, uh, it's eye-opening. And today I want to look at the, uh, the 99th Psalm. The, the 99th Psalm. The thing that this particular psalm speaks about is something I think we miss because we make God way too small. We make him smaller than what he is, partly because I think it's hard for us to grasp, grasp his greatness. He has no end, so he continues on. He, he is so big that, that I think it's hard for us because we are finite. He is not finite. And that makes it tougher for us to really grab a hold of who he is and, <clears throat> and, and how, how mighty he is. So this particular psalm, Psalm 99, speaks into that. And it uses two phrases for God, two of the names for God, that, um, that define who he is. And there are multiple names for God because he cannot be contained with one name. So this uses the word Jehovah. Uh, in, in most Bibles, it's capital L-O-R-D. And the other one uses the term God, but it means um, uh, Elohim. So the other, the, the other word that it's using here is Elohim, which is uh, Almighty God. So I'm going to read this, and then we'll point out where that is. And hopefully, what this does is give us a better frame of reference of how great God really is. It starts out like this. The Lord, Jehovah, reigns. Let the people tremble. He is enthroned between the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted above all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awe-inspiring name. He is holy. The mighty king loves justice. You have established fairness. You have administered justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God. Bow in worship at his footstool. He is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also was among those calling on his name. They called to the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them in a pillar of cloud, and they kept his decrees and the statutes he gave them. Lord our God, you answered them. You were forgiving God to them. You were a forgiving God to them, but an, aven an avenger of their sinful actions. Exalt the Lord our God. Bow and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. Multiple times in there it talks about the Lord our God. The Lord Jehovah means the ever-present God. He's always there. He's never off. He's never closed for business. Uh, he's always on. And because he lives in the past, present, and future at the same time, he's always there waiting for us in whatever we face as people. When we go, oh, I didn't see that coming, he goes, I've been here waiting for you. So he's ever present. He's always there waiting for us. So that uses that ac across the board in, this, in these nine verses. But then it talks about Jehovah, our almighty God. So our ever-present almighty God. Our ever-present almighty God. When you look at this, think about that. He's ever-present. He's never turned off. And he is almighty. In other words, there isn't anything bigger than he is. There isn't anything stronger than he is. There isn't anything mightier than he is. So when we have a problem and we understand that he is never off, he never has any off hours. He's never on vacation. He never has a day off where he just kind of kind of says no I'm, I'm, I'm you all are on your own today he is always on um, so the Lord reigns the the all the ever-present one reigns let his people tremble it says the ever-present one in Zion he is exalted above his people then it gets to to verse 4 and we talk about justice 
And we, we say, you know, things need to be fair for people. Everybody should be treated equally, and everybody should. Uh, regardless of race, creed, color, tribe, or tongue, everybody needs to be treated fairly and with justice. And the Bible speaks about justice. And, 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 and throughout the Psalms, it speaks about justice. So this particular Psalm also speaks of God's justice. It says the mighty king, the almighty king, loves justice. He not only establishes it, he loves justice. He wants rightness and fairness. It says you have established fairness. You have administered justice and righteousness. So exalt the Jehovah our Elohim. Exalt the ever-present Almighty God. Exalt the ever-present Almighty God. Exalt the ever-present Almighty God. Make Him known. Praise Him. Think about Him in greater ways than we think about. Think about where we end, He doesn't even begin to end because there is no end with Him. So it says, He spoke to them in a pillar of cloud. They kept His decrees and the statutes He gave them. Jehovah, our Elohim, ever-present God, our almighty God, you answered them. You know, the, the writer of this psalm has got this together. He says, I see how big you are. I understand that you're bigger than me. I understand, therefore, that you are bigger than any problem I have. I understand that you're bigger than any situation I face. I understand that you're bigger than my emotional struggles. I understand that you're bigger than my financial struggles, my health issues, or all the things that kind of are surrounding us right now. We've got health issues with the virus. We've got an economic situation coming and, and really is here. And um, so... Um, while it's affecting other people in different ways, you know, uh, we're, we're in a situation where we can't fix this ourselves. We can't turn this on a dime. And we're saying, you know, we need somebody to fix this. And people say, well, science can fix it. And I think the greater thing is God, who is the God of all knowledge, he's almighty in all areas. In other words, there is nobody with greater wisdom than him, greater knowledge than him. He's the one who created what we use science for to search and so with that, we can look to him because he's greater than our problem. He's bigger than our situation. And he can help us when no one else can help us. Verse 9, exalt, magnify the uh, ever-present God, our almighty God. Bow in worship at his holy mountain for the ever-present almighty God is holy. I mean, that's just a great one. That is a great, that is a great psalm. And I hope that there are, as you continue on, there are psalms that speak to you in different ways. This one might speak to you in a way, but they're all going to have something for each one of us at some point that will speak to us in a deep way, that will help us understand who he is or help us communicate to him better. The psalm, book of Psalms, unlike any other book in the Bible, really has this ability to speak to everything that we go through in life. And that's why it's so great. Hope you continue on reading. Hope that you continue to have a great week. Um, and God be with you. And God bless you. We've got a song from Mike uh, Lloyd coming up right after this. And um, God's blessings to you. We'll talk again soon. Lord, I lift your name.
name on high. Throw down, lift your name on high.